no idea! My image of you is totally changed now. What do you want, Sarah? I am a divorcee, but it really has nothing to do with you. And what do you mean by the fact that your image of me has changed? You're a divorcee in your 40s, and you're currently single. Doesn't that make you depressed? I feel sorry for you. Your life is basically over. There's no need for you to pity me. I'm happy with my life. Don't try to feel better about yourself by putting me down and criticizing me. And just to let you know, I'm not in my 40s yet. I'm 37. Okay, whatever. 37 is still old. You're 10 years older than me. Well, everyone ages. You may be younger than me, but your youth won't last. But I'm still young and pretty, unlike you. By the way, I'm engaged! I think my looks and youth had something to do with it. Well, if your future husband is marrying you for your age and looks, I'm not sure that your marriage will last. Besides, being 27 doesn't make you special. There are many other people your age or younger. But congratulations on your engagement. I'm happy for you. Thank you. I'm very happy. But no need to congratulate me. I feel like being congratulated by someone like you would give me bad luck. That's a pretty rude thing to say to me, you know? I won't give you any bad luck. You have nothing to worry about. Well, you're a 37-year-old divorcee. Your existence in of itself is bad luck. What is your problem? What did I ever do to you? Why are you texting me in the first place? I'm sorry. I was just being honest. You should learn to keep some of those negative thoughts to yourself. It's called etiquette. A few days later... Mia! I had no idea that you're getting married too! Why didn't you tell me the other day? Why would you keep it a secret? I never felt that we were very close and I didn't feel the need to share this with you. Well, now you know. Isn't it so funny that we're getting married at the same time? Who knew you could find new love at your age? Who's the guy that was desperate enough to want to marry a divorcee like you? I hope that it's not a fraud. It's not. You don't need to worry about me. How are you so sure about that? You're old and ugly. Who'd want to be married to you? You should really get a close look of yourself in the mirror. Oh, by the way, I have a surprise for you! I already know that it's not the good kind. Just tell me what it is. I want to get it over with. I'm getting married on the same day as you! Isn't that so exciting? Now our colleagues will get to choose which wedding they want to be at. Why in the world would you do something so idiotic like that? Well, now it'll be clear who everyone likes at the office. Then you can see that you're not as great as you think that you are. This is outrageous! How could you do such a thing? We shouldn't make our colleagues choose between us. You're only saying that because you know that everyone will choose me. I mean, I'm the young and pretty one here. Everyone loves me. I wouldn't be so sure about that. I admire your optimism, though. Look, this isn't a popularity contest, and I think that it's a really bad idea to get married on the same day. If we don't get married on the same day, we can attend each other's weddings. Isn't that better? Hey, you're the one that had to get engaged at the same time as me. If anything, I should be mad at you for all of this. Everyone's going to come to my wedding, so you won't have any guests at yours except for maybe your family. You're being really immature here. I guess you're lucky in a way. You only need to rent out a small space for your wedding. I can't believe that you went out of your way to change your wedding date so last minute. You must really hate me or love me. You shouldn't be plotting against me. You should concentrate on having a nice wedding. I'll still have a fabulous wedding. I won't regret any of it. Besides, no one wants to see you in a wedding dress. I'm doing everyone a favor.
Is there a need for you to be so cruel to me? I don't deserve to be treated like this. You didn't have to text me to tell me that you're getting married on the same day as me. I didn't want you to be shocked when no one showed up at your wedding. I guess it doesn't matter. It's not even your first wedding. I'm sure that you'll have a lovely and intimate wedding. Don't feel bad about the fact that your wedding won't be as lavish as mine. Have you been paying attention to me at all? You're going to regret this decision. I won't. You'll be the one with regrets. I assure you, no one's going to show up at your wedding. People at our office are congratulating you about your engagement, but they're only being polite. You shouldn't take them so seriously. Fine, have it your way. You're not going to listen to anything that I have to say anyway. I don't have time to waste talking to you. Changing your wedding date so last minute is going to end up costing you a lot of money. Don't say that I didn't warn you. You don't need to worry about me. You should be worrying about yourself. Have a nice wedding. I know that I will. Yeah, whatever. It's a pity for you that we're getting married on the same day. I'm sorry for taking all of your guests. They all want to come to my wedding and not yours. Yes, you mentioned that. I'll be fine. Are you sure about that? Let me just warn you one last time, though. You should take a look at the company newsletter before you go ahead with your wedding. If you still want to get married on the same day as me, even after reading the newsletter, I won't say anything more. See you tomorrow. Mia? What's going on? Have your wedding guests arrived already? What do you want? I'm busy. All of my guests are a no-show. Did something bad happen at the office? Is that why no one could make it to my wedding? I guess you never read the company newsletter. What? You lost, Sarah, and I won. You see, everyone chose to come to my wedding and not yours. I don't get it. All of my guests have arrived and I'm getting ready to start my wedding. Why would our colleagues go to your wedding and not mine? One of my colleagues texted me something strange earlier. They said that I was insane for missing the wedding of our company president. What does that even mean? Did you know that our company president was also getting married today? Yes, I knew that. I'm the one that's getting married to him, and we're about to start our wedding. What? I don't believe that. Since I'm marrying the company president, it makes sense that all of our colleagues would be at my wedding and not yours. We have a ton of guests. It's going to be a huge ceremony. That's why I told you it wouldn't be a good idea for you to get married on the same day as me, but you didn't want to listen. Oh, I see. I finally understand what you've been trying to tell me. So that's why our one of our colleagues didn't take me seriously when I told them that I was getting married on the same day as you. Well, it's your fault for not reading the company newsletter or paying attention to anything that people have been telling you at the office. How could you work for the company and not know that I was getting married to the company president? How clueless are you? I mean, everyone else at the office knew. That's all that everyone's been talking about. Weren't you paying any attention? I guess I was too focused on my own wedding. And I was late to one of our morning meetings, so I probably missed the big news. I see. Sucks for you, doesn't it? Perhaps you should try to come to work on time. You're always late. Everyone in the office has been complaining about it. They say that you're really irresponsible. I had no idea that's how everyone felt about me. I thought that I was the only one that you didn't send out an invitation to, but when I checked, none of our colleagues have received a wedding invitation from you. Why is that? Well, I told everyone that I was getting married, so I figured that I didn't have to send out the invitations. I thought that they'd show up. I didn't want to waste my money sending out the wedding invitations to people in the office that I see every day. But if you formally wanted to invite them to your wedding, you should have sent out those invitations. No one knew if your wedding was happening for real because they didn't see any invitations go out. 
But they said to my face that they would all come to my wedding. And I gave them the date and the venue, so I figured they were all coming. I never knew that they were expecting to be formally invited. Well, that's how a wedding usually works. You don't just confirm people's attendance verbally. And no one believed that you were crazy enough to plan your wedding on the same day as the company president's. So it was inevitable that no one showed up at your wedding. I can't believe this. I thought that everyone was coming to my wedding, so I made all the arrangements. Well, that's a shame. You don't even care, do you? Don't you see how badly I'm hurt by all this? I beg you, could you please ask everyone to come to my wedding instead? My wedding's gonna be so much fun! I can't do that. It's not only my wedding, but also the company president's. I don't think that any of our colleagues would ditch the company president's wedding to go to yours. But I've worked really hard to plan my wedding. What am I supposed to do now? This wedding is costing me a lot of money, too. What would my other guests think if I had 50 empty seats that were reserved for my colleagues? What is my fiancé and his family going to think of me? They're not going to be happy about all of this. I guess you'll need to figure out a way to fix this then. You made fun of the fact that I'm a divorcee, so I can't help but feel that you deserve this. I'm not the only pathetic one here. I mean, you planned a big wedding and 50 of your guests aren't going to show up and your husband is going to be very upset with you. I wouldn't be surprised if your fiancé asked you to call off your wedding. You're really enjoying this right now, aren't you? I don't ever want to become a pathetic divorcee like you! Don't curse me! What's so wrong with being a divorcee anyway? You should have never made fun of me because of it. I got married to my first husband in my 20s, and we decided to get divorced, but I have no regrets. It's better than staying in a loveless marriage. You had no right to make me feel bad for the decision that I made about my own life. You should focus on your own life instead of criticizing mine. Why would you think to compare yourself to me in the first place? I actually don't know why either. But I'm in trouble now. Please help me. What am I supposed to do about all the empty seats at my wedding? This is not the time for you to be lecturing me. And I can't believe that you're getting married to the company president. You're probably envious of the fact that I'm going to have a happy marriage and that my husband happens to be very wealthy. But you don't know how hard I've worked for everything in my life up until now. I think that my hard work has finally paid off. Can you say the same about yourself? Well, I'm not so sure. Well, you should stop looking down on other people just because they're different from you. Not only are you hurting those people's feelings, but I don't think that you gain any happiness from your actions. I think that you'll find that you'll feel better about yourself if you were more considerate towards others. Okay, I won't be so critical of others and I'll work on being more considerate. So you, could you please do me a big favor by coming to my wedding? You should bring your fiancé and all your wedding guests. It'll be a big party! Or we could have a collective wedding. What do you think? I'm sorry, but I can't do that. I've been preparing for this day for months, and I can't make any last-minute changes. I'm sorry, but I have to get going. My wedding's about to start. So you're not going to help me, then? I, I can't believe this is happening to me. There really isn't anything that I can help you with. Have a nice day, Sarah. I'm not going to have a nice day if most of my guests are not going to show up. You should have listened to me, but you didn't want to. You just assumed that whatever I said was irrelevant to you. You never took me seriously. I'll see you at work next week. Bye. Mia had a gorgeous and lovely wedding surrounded by family, friends, and colleagues. As for Sarah, she had 50 empty seats at her venue, and the wedding guests that actually showed up felt uncomfortable. Sarah's fiancé and his family asked her why so many guests decided not to come to the wedding. When she told them the reason, they were shocked to say the least. Sarah's fiancé was disappointed in her for changing their wedding date over something so trivial, and their marriage was off to a rocky start. It looks like they might even be headed for a divorce, which is something that Sarah hadn't wished for at all. 
Sarah was also too embarrassed to go back to work after what happened, and she decided to quit her job. We're left to wonder why she made such a big deal out of Mia being a divorcee. Was it really worth all the work that she put in to try to make Mia's life miserable? Probably not. Good evening, Mrs. Baker. This is Gordon. I hope you aren't busy, but I have some good news for you. I was able to reserve the room that I promised you. Thank you so much. I apologize for asking on such short notice, but even so, you still went through and helped me. I really don't know how to thank you. I'm sure it must have been quite difficult. You don't have to worry about that. You're always helping me too, so of course I would do everything in my power to help you as well. I appreciate you for always helping my husband and I. You wanted to reserve a room for your wedding anniversary celebration, right? Yes, that's right. My husband is always working overseas, so it was kind of difficult to decide on a day. But since their 10-year anniversary, he was able to get a couple days off. He just got back the other day, and now we're finally going on vacation together. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm honored that you chose our hotel to celebrate such an important day in your lives. He's always the one to make reservations for us, so this time I wanted to surprise him by making the reservation myself. I figured if I really wanted this to go well, I'd be better off asking you because I knew you'd be able to help me with all the small details on the day of. Oh, yes, of course. However, I'm sorry to say that I won't be able to accompany you for your celebrations due to the fact that I also have to work overseas. The day that I leave happens to be the day that you reserved. Oh, really? That's too bad. I was looking forward to celebrating with you. How will we go about doing the preparations, then? I will inform the manager about everything, so would you be able to contact him about the details of your stay? It would probably be a lot easier for them to understand if you told him directly, rather than I did. That's true. I'd also hate to put you through any more trouble. I'll contact him directly. Oh, I have no problems whatsoever. I'm just terribly sorry that I won't be there on the day of the celebration. I'll give you the manager's phone number. Yes, thank you. I also have one more thing to ask you. Yes, what is it? This might be a strange favor I'm about to ask you. Is that okay? Hello, this is B. Adamson. I'm the manager. I got word from Gordon to contact you. What can I help you with today, ma'am? Ah, yes, thank you. My name is Leah Baker. I wanted to surprise my husband on the day of our wedding anniversary, so I was hoping that you could help me. What kind of surprise were you planning? It will all be separate prices, so I hope you've checked our homepage. What? Prices? I'm sorry, but I didn't check the prices. This is a luxury hotel, so things like surprise cakes and champagne will cost an extra bit. I suggest you check the prices in advance. Oh, okay. Can I ask you to contact me when you've checked them? I understand. I would assume that you'll be with your children as well. I feel the need to remind you that this is a luxury hotel. There are a lot of high-class guests who stay with us. Yes, I've heard about that. I've heard a lot of celebrities and famous athletes stay at your hotel. I'd like to ask you to watch your children and make sure they don't do anything in front of those guests. Um, what is that supposed to mean? I'm sure it would bother the guests if you were in the lobby, etc., with your noisy children. That's what I mean. Uh, yes, I'll definitely be careful about that. Now, about the surprise. I'd like to arrange an anniversary cake, champagne, and decorations in advance. And if it's not too much trouble, I'd also like to reserve the pool and bar area for the night. Forgive me, Mrs. Baker. I just have a couple of things I need to confirm with you before we discuss this. Huh? A couple things like what? Do you have a chauffeur for the day of the celebration? What? A chauffeur? What are you talking about? Normally, our hotel welcomes many guests who have their chauffeurs with them. Mr. Gordon also told me to reserve a parking space for you. Is it a sports car or anything like that? Uh, no, I don't have a sports car. I can't let my children ride in a sports car. That makes sense. Well, is it an SUV or something bigger like that? 
No, I have a small car. I'm sorry for asking, but does that have anything to do with the surprise? As a manager of this expensive luxury hotel, I have the responsibility of thinking about my guests. Is there something wrong with that? Well, no, there isn't. It just kind of feels like I'm being interrogated for no particular reason. Well, excuse me. All I did was ask you the questions that needed to be asked. I'll be returning to my work now. We look forward to your stay, and please, take care. Uh, wait, what about the surprise? I don't think we really organized anything yet. Please leave. You really thought you could stay here, didn't you? <laughs> what is the meaning of this? I'm pretty sure I made the reservation. Why didn't you even let us into the parking lot? Was there something wrong in the system or something? If it was the system, I printed out my reservation, so I can show that to you if you want. It was just as I expected. <laughs> just as you expected? What does that mean? You came to our luxury hotel in your little mini car and thought you would be able to stay here? <laughs> what were you thinking? How did you think that that would work? I just don't understand. I'm 100% positive that I made the reservation. The owner should have made it for me. I even have proof. I'm sorry, but I just don't think a family who pulls up in a mini car would be able to afford a suite. Is that some kind of prank? Are you looking down on us because of the type of car we drive? Our car has nothing to do with the fact that we made a reservation with this hotel. I don't get it. That's not what I meant. You don't have a reservation with us, so I'm going to have to ask you to leave. There's a little motel a couple of blocks down the road. Maybe you could <laughs> ask them? Are you trying to turn us away? Are you being serious? What about my anniversary surprise? You probably can't afford it anyways, so there's no point in preparing the surprise. It would be a giant waste of time. <laughs> We don't have any rooms for low-cum people such as yourselves. If you'd like, I can compile a list of other locations that might be within your price range. Low income? Are you being completely serious right now? Of course I am. <laughs> Do you all know what you're doing? You can't just stroll up to an expensive hotel without being able to pay for it. I could ask you the same thing. What do you think you're doing? You can call me for all you want, but I would still like to have my celebration like planned. Wow, you're persistent. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you before you understand? Low-income families with many cars cannot stay at our hotel. It's common sense. The owner is telling me to turn you away, so please leave. Okay, that's fine with me. Then I guess that means you don't need the $5 million loan anymore. Huh? That's what my husband said. You said that the owner, in other words, Mr. Gordon, said to turn me away. If that's really the case, then the loan is off. But even if it isn't true, my husband says that he doesn't feel like lending you the money anymore. If this hotel has someone like you as the manager, there's no way that your business would recover. Just what are you even talking about? What do you mean by that? What's all this about a loan? Are you trying to mess with me or something? You're the manager, but you don't even know what's going on in your own hotel? Didn't the owner tell you? The business at your hotel dropped because of the recent COVID-19 infections, hasn't it? That isn't anybody's fault, but the hotel's revenue plummeted. That's why you all had to apply for a loan. My husband actually just approved the loan, but I'm not so sure about that anymore. What? The financer is your husband? That has to be a joke, right? Please, tell me you're joking. You're free to think of it as a joke all you want. But don't you think it's a bit strange? We were able to get a reservation for a suite with a six-month waiting list? Hmm, that is true. I don't think you know how much Mr. Gordon has been trying to win my husband's favor. You probably should have picked up on that at least. Is that so? I'm terribly sorry, but allow me to confirm. You really aren't joking about this. What do you mean? Forgive me, but you came in a mini car, didn't you? It's a bit unrealistic that you'd be the loan financer. I can't imagine that you'd have such a small car if you really had that much money. 
I guess it's decided then. We will definitely not lend any money to a hotel where you're the manager. That's what my husband says anyways. Why not? All I did was ask you about your car. I do believe you're overreacting. It's too late to save yourself now. It doesn't make sense to start panicking. I'm sure the owner will be furious when he hears about this. By the way, you're an extremely ignorant person. What? Ignorant? The car that we were driving was not a mini car. What? That car's so small, of course it had to be a mini car. It's a classic car, and it's a very expensive one for your information. Classic car? What? It really feels like you're bringing down the reputation of your hotel just by being the manager. <laughs> you were being ignorant and looked down on us because you thought we drove a cheap car, and because of that you told us to go home. Is that something a proper hotel employee does to his guests? I didn't think it was an expensive car. You didn't even have a chauffeur, so I misunderstood and thought you were low income. You can misunderstand all you want, but using that as a reason to discriminate against your guests, don't you think that's a bad thing to do? You might be right, but all I did was make bad judgment. I didn't mean for it to be rude or anything. Can you please just understand that? Bad judgment or not, it's not a nice thing to do. I've never been treated like this in my entire life. You couldn't even help organize my surprise, even though my husband went through the trouble to get today off work. All that and this is what happens? Thanks to you, our 10-year anniversary has been ruined. We were looking forward to this day for a very long time. I'm terribly sorry. I'll start the preparations right now, so please come back. We'll get the surprise ready as well, and we'll throw in the cake and champagne as free service, too. No thanks. What do you mean? If there's anything else you need, please, just let me know. I knew something was weird about the fact that we were making reservations over WhatsApp. I tried not to think too much about it, but I guess it's too late now. You definitely went too far with what you did. I'm extremely sorry. I'll make sure something like this never happens again. Can you please just give us one more chance to make things right? Hello, Mrs. Baker. I hope everything is going well with your anniversary. I extend my heartfelt congratulations to the both of you. Ah, Mr. Gordon, thank you very much. You actually texted me just at the perfect time. I'm afraid that nothing has gone as planned and it's nothing to do with your hotel. Oh, dear, I'm very sorry to hear that. Was there a problem? Your manager, Mr. Adamson, is the problem, I'm afraid. He's insulted me and my family by assuming we were low income because of the fact that I drive a small car. It's ridiculous, but it was very unprofessional and rude of him. What? Please allow me to apologize on his behalf. Mr. Adamson never seemed like the kind of person to say such discriminatory and distasteful things to a customer. I have screenshots of the conversation if you need to see them. My husband is very angry, and he told me that the request you put in for the $5 million loan might be in jeopardy because of this. This is very deplorable behavior from Mr. Adamson, and he will be dealt with appropriately. I'm very sorry that you had to experience this, Mrs. Baker. You are one of our most valued customers. Please, I would like to ask that you don't cancel the loan. Hello? Are you there? Can we just forget this ever happened? Nope, it won't happen. I've already spoken to the owner anyways. What? The owner? Gordon? Right. We told him that we won't issue the loan as long as you're working as manager. What? That's what my husband told him. The rest is up to you. If I was him, I'd fire you in a heartbeat. What? Fire me? I'm the manager, though. I can't be fired. If the hotel manager was this much of a piece of trash, of course the quality of the hotel would be affected as well. Did you just call me a piece of trash? All I did was misunderstand your situation. There's no need for name-calling. Please, allow me to fix this. I was wrong for what I did. I'm sorry. Sorry, but it's no use anymore. My husband is already angry, and I'm even more furious. Wait, the owner is calling me right now. Do you think it's about your reservation? 
Don't ask me. How about you answer the phone? I can't imagine why he wouldn't be angry right now. You tried to turn away a paying customer. I didn't think that you would pay in the first place. I thought you would run off and I was trying to avoid that. You didn't look like you could afford the cost of the suite. You still don't understand what you're saying, do you? Doesn't that sound at least a tiny bit rude to you? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. You're misunderstanding me. No, I think I understand you perfectly. You've just been saying anything you feel like, but everything came back to bite you in the butt. I'm really sorry. I seriously regret what I said. I already told you it's no use. <laughs> it's over for you. Disgusting men like you, who make a living out of discriminating and judging people, will always just end up screwing themselves over. This is all your own fault. You've dug your own grave, and now you have to lie in it. In the end, Mr. Gordon was extremely furious about what Mr. Adamson had done. He wasn't satisfied with just firing him, so he requested that he pay reparations equivalent to a one-night stay in the suite. Mr. Adamson lost his position as manager and therefore lost his job, so he apparently used up all of his savings to pay the reparations. He was so quick to judge people based on appearances, and due to his arrogance and ignorance, he ended up dealing a lot of damage to himself. He dug his own grave, and now he doesn't know what to do. He's completely at a loss. As for our 10-year anniversary celebration, of course we weren't able to hold it as planned. Mr. Gordon felt extremely apologetic about the whole situation, and he offered us a free stay to make up for it. He also said he'd give us free catering and drinks. My husband had to go back overseas, and he won't be able to take a day off for another month, but it's definitely better than nothing. I appreciate Mr. Gordon a lot.